welcome to Pharmacode. My name is Raphael. In today's video, I will be discussing how to get a software developer job in Canada. As much as the tips shared in this video would apply to everyone who is in the software development field, I would kind of want to focus more on people who are transitioning into software development from different careers. And so, quite a number of times, I will be sharing specific tips for people in that, who are in that category. Okay, so um, the very first thing you need to get a software development job in Canada is to have a Canadian standard resume. And I will try to put up a format on the screen on how a Canadian resume looks like. So generally you would have your name, the region where you are currently located, even though a lot of software development jobs these days are remote, nonetheless, you still have to kind of specify what area or what region you are located due to various reasons. One of them would include your time zone. Okay, so a Canadian resume would have like your name, your primary location or city, um, your postal code, your phone number, email address, things like that. Um, if you have a GitHub URL or a website, you would want to include that there. And you also kind of have like a professional summary. And um, yeah, and then you definitely would want to include your skill sets, the programming languages you are very much familiar with, um, the technologies you have used. You would also want to include your education and your professional experience as a developer or not and because um, if you do not have professional experience as a developer you definitely want to include if your regular experience right and then try to um, tailor it to tailor some of your transferable skills or things that are related to the development that you have done um, you would also want to include maybe your github projects that you've worked on so for those who do not have canadian experience or software development experience and you want to transition into software development you would also want to include github projects that you've worked on probably um, list out the projects you built the features they have um, if it's hosted on the url you want to put that as well definitely add the github um, a link to the github project there and and yeah, that's that about a typical Canadian resume. And so there are, there are actually a number of websites, a lot of a lot of YouTube tutorials you could watch on how to um, write a Canadian standard resume. Um, but just make sure that those are the important things that you cannot do without. Those things have to be there on the resume. Okay, the next is going to be um, education. So specifically, I know that at least from experience that Canada Canadian companies usually want to um, make sure that you have they kind of give um, preference to people who studied in Canada and um, that doesn't mean that your foreign education is trash no it just means that someone who studied in Canada has higher preference compared to you studied outside Canada. So what you want to make sure that you do is, if you studied computer science outside Canada, all well and good, chances are you won't probably have this issue. But for those of us who transitioned into software development, um, you would want to make sure that since your current education is not software development, it's not computer science, it's not anything in the tech field, you definitely want to make sure that you try as much as possible to get some form of Canadian training. So that would be in the form of a boot camp or actually going to school, maybe getting a diploma here in Canada. And the reason for this is because, like I said earlier on, a lot of employers would want you to have some form of Canadian education that can be easily verified. And um, these days, there are a lot of boot camps available out there that you could use, that you could explore sometimes three months, six months, nine months, one year, it kind of give you and then you end up with some form of Canadian certification or a Canadian diploma with, uh, which is like attached with a Canadian institution here. Um, yeah, so boot camps and um, universities or colleges would be your go-to. 
that a lot of them can also be free or government sponsored or you pay out of pocket. I have a video where I explained one of the programs that I did. So I, I cannot recommend any specific programs. And the reason is because um, the government sponsored ones would always vary from time to time. So these organizations usually have funding at some point. Sometimes they change funding, sometimes they change locations. And so you just want to make sure that you have your ears on ground, you're searching and you have alerts on so that you can get whatever it is that is currently ongoing. All right, yeah. So that is that about education. Then for Canadian experience, of course, if you're a developer, um, just add all of, or you're an engineer, just add up all your, all your experiences in, on your resume. But if you are just transitioning into software development and you do not have an actual experience, uh, experience within the company, you can leave this category out. Or you can, if you have experience that is somewhat, um, that have, trans, um, or if you have experience that is, um, if you have any experience that can give you some form of transferable skills, um, then definitely include them there and highlight those transferable skills. So things like maybe you've worked with software testing, you have worked with debugging, you have worked with some technical support and, and things around that line. So definitely you can include those experience there on your resume. And... Um, so, but if you have nothing, like this, nothing at all related to development or engineering in any form, software development or software engineering in any form, then you can leave that category out. However, you then make sure that you have projects, lots and lots of projects to prove your skills with these languages or with these frameworks that you claim you, you know. Um, so the next thing I'll talk about is GitHub projects. So um, GitHub project is like a no-brainer because whether it is whether you are um, you are an experienced software developer or you are not, you kind of want to have GitHub projects, things that you have worked on, experimented on, um, projects that you built by yourself from start to finish, that basically encompasses the languages or um, the frameworks that you want to focus on. Um, usually you are looking at a full-blown application that has front-end, back-end, a database section, you know, basically that kind of encompasses um, full-stack development. However, if you know that you want to only want to focus on front-end, then obviously you're going to, you, know, you want to probably have lots and lots of front-end projects. If you want to focus only on back-end, definitely have a whole lot of back-end projects, right? So basically make sure that you work on tons and tons of projects. You can just Google around for projects, ideas, things that you could build and have them publicly hosted on GitHub and then include them in your resume. Highlight the features, highlight the languages, the frameworks, the packages that you used, right? So that a hiring manager can kind of understand that yes, you have the skill set and you have used them for these purposes. So once you have your Canadian resume um, done and dusted, then you want to make sure that you start applying and applying and applying and applying for jobs. Do not stop applying for jobs. <laughs> so yeah, this, this is the challenging part, right? Because like, um, I, there are a lot of job boards that actually make these things easy. So I would, I would definitely recommend Indeed. Indeed is my number one go-to platform for job hunting. And number two for me is gonna be LinkedIn. So what you can do is you can create alerts on these platforms. You can put in if you have locations in mind, you can put in the location. And if you have, obviously, you're going to have languages and frameworks that you are familiar with. Uh, and then you you set alerts for those specific um, job titles or frameworks or languages and location if you want. And then so that anytime there's a new job posting, you get an email alert and then you apply for it immediately. So... Um, and of course, things like cover letter comes into place. You there are tons of materials online that you can learn how to write a well-crafted cover letter. Um, basically, you just want to explain yourself. So, if you are well experienced, obviously talk about your experience, talk about the company values in your cover letter, talk about um, the values and the experience you bring in, talk about why you want to work at the company, and things like that in your cover letter. Tons of lots of tips out there. And um, and if you do not have any 
software development experience you know you're just transitioning to software development you want to talk about your passion and your values and how it aligns with the company values and how your prior experience is going to make uh, make you a good developer in in the company that you're applying to right so things like that that is for companies who will require cover letter but quite a number of times these days cover letters i don't know personally i don't think they have really been requested for cover letters these days so probably can just keep it out just ensure that you are applying for a lot of jobs so indeed like i said linkedin is also good glassdoor there are a ton of job boards out there that you can create alerts for on and then keep on applying okay then you can also explore recruitment agencies so recruitment agencies are dedicated to getting workforce to companies right so you can there are quite a number of them that are kind of specific for developers or tech um, tech recruitment generally uh, i'm not sure i want to mention names here but there are tons of them so just ensure that if you want to follow the recruitment agency route register with them and let them know your skill set level what kind of jobs they're looking for and they'll, they'll continue to put you out there right but i know that a lot of people who have gotten a lot of jobs through recruitment agencies so definitely it's an option for you out there another thing you want to you also want to ensure you do is that you network um, so you need to network with um, hiring managers with fellow developers with um, basically tech companies that you want to work you want you are interested in and um, just kind of build a network around people in your field in software development field right and um, you can do that on LinkedIn you can connect with CTUs you can connect with um, senior developers, hiring managers, software man software engineering managers, a lot of that. You can connect with them on LinkedIn just so that you have a wider network and when and whenever um, a new position is open, you kind of can apply like that. You can also join development local development communities. Um, for instance, I'm in Edmonton, so there's like an Edmonton Development Society, there's an Edmonton Startup Community as well. You can basically join all those online communities. You can also just, um, go for physical meetup um, gatherings, right? Basically just trying to mingle um, around people in your industry, in software development industry, so you can. So whenever there is an opening, you definitely will get to be the first to hear about it and kind of apply, right? So you've standardized your resume to a Canadian standard. You have, you've, you've ensured that you have your education right, your experience right, GitHub projects. You've applied to tons and tons of jobs. And then now you have an interview. So with most Canadian companies, they usually would have like a technical and a non-technical interview. So technical interview typically involves um, whiteboarding, um, asking, general questions around like technical concepts and uh, so things like technical interview will be like maybe an algorithm question, data structure questions, um, probably they might put up a, a problem on the board and ask you to pick up the marker and write a solution to it, right? Um, you can, most times they will ask you to use the programming language you are most comf comfortable with and um, so basically you might want to practice with online um, coding interview questions there are quite a number of them online um, just to get yourself familiarized with the way questions are asked uh, and but you most times there are questions there are solutions there are questions that the answers you can arrive to them logically right um, so they might say write an algorithm to solve this problem or um, write how would you rearrange these lists or um, things that are quite a number of those kind of questions available right and just basically they're just trying to gauge your um, your problem solving skills and how well you know the language you are using right and they also there are quite a number of times when you also get questions around concepts so things like ssl so far i'm just using it as an example you can get 
questions around MySQL, if you're talking about um, databases, right? Um, so basically just try to make sure that you have a good understanding of all the concepts, all the technical concepts when it comes to software development. And then for non-technical interviews, a lot of times um, this question, this interview would evolve around how you relate with people, how you relate with team members, how you relate with your manager. And so a lot of times they are bothered around behavioral questions. So things like how would you react if someone gave you a terrible code review, for instance, or how would you, how do you write your code review? So basically in the software development team, you would make, um, you write code, you do pull requests, another developer would review what you've written, probably drop comments here and there, and then you fix those comments or you discuss with the developer. So basically just want to make sure that you can relate with your co-workers, right, amicably. <laughs> so um, a lot of non-technical interview questions are, are bothered around um, behavioral questions. So you want to make sure there are quite a number of tips online as well you can you can read up on them but a whole lot of times it's going to be for software development it's going to be around how you relate with your team members so as long as you're a good person you are fair you are kind you are honest you should be able to do well with behavioral questions now even after having the perfect Canadian resume, you have applied to the jobs that a perfect fit for you, you have all the best um, projects on GitHub and all of that, you ace technical and non-technical interviews, you might still not get the job. And a, lot, a number of times, it just might not be your fault at all, right? So um, there are times when the company probably lost funding for that position, Sometimes the position itself was closed, like they no longer need a new developer to join the team. Sometimes it was internally filled, so maybe someone is crossing from another, developer, from another department into the software engineering team and they just filled the role internally. Sometimes um, you, competition might just knock you out. So for instance, you, maybe they interview 20 people and you only want to hire two. If you are the top five, you might just miss out on that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are terrible at interviews. It just means that you just did not call that competition. So what do you what do you have to do next? Keep on applying, right? So until you get your software development job. And the interesting thing about Canada is that, especially for newcomers into the software development field, the moment you get your first software development job, it's kind of easy to then get the next one and get the next one because now you have the Canadian experience. As weird, as weird as it sounds, in the Canadian software engineering field, the Canadian experience is, is a big thing. And so you just have to get that break and get your first job experience as a software developer. And from then, things just get easier afterwards. Um, yeah, so that's that about that. I hope um, you have learned a thing or two from my discussion and if you have any questions please drop them in the comments i will be there to reply and if you also have additional tips to share as well please share them in the comment section and let's discuss but for now bye au revoir